The origins of electrogravitics can be traced back to Nikola Tesla's work with high-voltage shock discharges at the turn of the 20th century, and somewhat later to Thomas Townsend Brown's relatively unpublicized discovery that electrostatic and gravitational fields are closely intertwined. Unfortunately, the electrogravitic effect has, for the most part, been ignored by mainstream academics because the phenomenon isn't anticipated by either classical electrostatics or general relativity. Thomas Townsend Brown was born in 1905 to a well-to-do Zanesville, Ohio family. At an early age, he displayed a keen interest in space travel and dreamed of one day traveling into space himself. His discovery of the electrogravitic phenomena occurred during his high school years when his interest in space travel led him to toying with a Coolidge tube a high-voltage X-ray emitting vacuum tube. Brown had the insight to mount the tube on a delicate balance to investigate whether it might produce any thrust. To his surprise, the tube moved every time that it was turned on. Ruling out X-rays as the cause of this mysterious force, he traced the effect to the high voltage he was applying to the tube's plates. After additional experiments, Brown eventually developed an electrical capacitor device, which he termed the gravitator. One version consisted of a wooden box two feet long and four inches square that contained a series of massive electrically conductive plates made of lead and separated from one another by electrically insulating sheets of glass, which served as the capacitor's dielectric medium. When energized with up to 150,000 volts of direct current, Brown's gravitator developed a thrust in the direction of its positively charged end. Brown entered the California Institute of Technology in 1922 and began establishing himself as a first-class lab man. His goal was to win over his professors so he could show them the results of his experiments and hopefully get them interested in the electrogravitic phenomenon. He had some of his equipment from his laboratory in Ohio shipped out to California, hoping to demonstrate the effects to his professors. He sent each of his professors invitations, invited them to come witness his experiment. Unfortunately, none of them showed up. Brown would later leave Caltech heartbroken and attend college back in Ohio at Denison University. In 1928, Brown published a paper on the Beifeld-Brown effect using the name of one of his professors, Dr. Alfred Beifeld. It is uncertain whether Dr. Beifeld had any actual influence on the experiments or on the production of the paper itself. These reported effects have been excused, ignored, and even ridiculed by mainstream science. According to Wikipedia, the Biefeld-Brown effect is a result of ion wind and not a gravitational effect. To support this statement, they cite vacuum chamber experiments carried out by the Mythbusters television show and another conducted by Dr. Martin Tajmar. They, however, fail to make any mention of conflicting experimental results. In 1955 and 1956, under the sponsorship of the French government, Thomas Townsend Brown conducted a series of vacuum chamber experiments at facilities made available by Société Nationale de Constructions Aéronautiques du Sud-Ouest, a Paris-based aeronautical corporation. There, Brown flew a pair of miniature saucer-shaped airfoils in a high vacuum of less than one billionth of an atmosphere. According to alleged witness reports, not only did the disks propel themselves more efficiently inside of a vacuum, but they also sped faster since without ion leakage they could be energized with greater voltages. So despite what the science police who monitor Wikipedia have to say, the verdict on the Breifeld-Brown effect is not quite so cut and dry. Without further experimentation and analysis, it is impossible to tell whether this is an elaborate hoax on the part of Thomas Townsend Brown or a scientific cover-up of the electrogravitic technology. One thing is for certain, the government and military seem to be hiding something. In its March 9, 1992 issue of Aviation Week and Space Technology magazine, they made the surprising disclosure that the B-2 Advanced Technology Bomber electrostatically charges its exhaust stream and the leading edges of its wing-like body. Although these disclosures were framed in the context of enhancing the B-2's radar invisibility, it is believed that they are in fact part of an electrogravitic drive capability. Aviation Week obtained this information from a small group of renegade West Coast scientists and engineers who were formerly associated with Black Research Projects, which are defense research projects that are so secret that even their very existence is classified. 
Northrop, the prime contractor for the B-2, had been experimenting with applying high-voltage charge to aircraft hulls since at least 1968, when at an aerospace sciences meeting held in New York in January of 1968, scientists from Northrop's NOR Air Division reported that they were beginning wind tunnel studies on aerodynamic effects of applying high-voltage charges to the leading edges of high-speed aircraft bodies. Similar research was carried out in 1965 by the Grumman and Avco corporations. Interestingly, in 1994, Northrop bought out and merged with Grumman. Brown also called attention to this effect in his 1960 electrokinetic apparatus patent, which describes using a flame jet generator to place a high-voltage positive charge on a needle-like electrode at the front end of a rocket. Aerospace companies later put Brown's suggestions into use. A spike was placed on the nose of a rocket and caused to emit a high-voltage arc. Wind tunnel studies showed that the resulting electric field pushed the bow shock front away from the nose of the rocket so that it no longer contacted the main body of the missile, and hence substantially reduced the air drag. Now, there's a big difference between using high-voltage electrostatics to reduce air drag versus producing gravitational effects. If the presence of extremely large electric fields can affect local gravity, it could be the breakthrough that scientists and gravity researchers have been waiting for. Or maybe they've just been ignoring it all along. Either way, the information I have just provided you with should be enough to warrant a further investigation. According to Dr. Eugene Podklitnov, high-voltage electrostatic fields produce a polarization of the vacuum energy density, or a polarization of the subatomic particles which constitute the vacuum, and thereby produce gravitational effects. There is also apparently more than one way to achieve this. I will be posting the complete, unabridged, and exclusive interview with the elusive Dr. Eugene Podklitnov very shortly, so please stay tuned for that. Please check the video description for additional links and sources by clicking more info above right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe to my channel. This is Alien Scientist speaking. If you are listening, then you are the resistance. Please feel free to download and share this video. The information is too important to keep secret any longer.